Hello guys, welcome to another series of Know Your CRM 2016. This particular series, we're going to be treating service scheduling management. And this is going to be the last series in the service work area. In today's uh, video, we will deal with service scheduling, uh, general scenarios of service scheduling as where it's kind of like applicable. And we're also going to treat uh, service scheduling features and service uh, scheduling process. So what is service scheduling? Service scheduling in Microsoft Dynamics CRM is designed for organizations providing services that require combinations of resources. Now service scheduling works by considering availability of employees, facilities, and equipment to ensure that resources are available to deliver service activities for customers. Another thing we would like to talk about will be the service scheduling terminology. What is a service? A service is a type of work provided to a customer and performed by one or more resources. And then the next, the next terminology we want to talk about will be the selection rule. A selection rule specifies how users, facilities, or equipment should be combined to perform a service. The selection rule can take into account a combination of many different factors, including which resources can deliver a service. Remember we talked about or we've defined what a service is. And then the next one or the same, the, the next term we would, we would like to define will be the resource. Now resources in Microsoft Dynamics are people such as CRM users, facilities such as a room or a hall where service activity can be performed. The next term is resource group. Now, a resource group in Microsoft Dynamics is just a pool of similar resources from which individual resources can be chosen or for a service activity. Resource groups are used in Microsoft Dynamics CRM to model the skills or other characteristics required to perform or deliver a service. The next term we'll like to talk about before we move on will be the site. In Microsoft Dynamics CRM, sites typically represent geographic locations such as a specific office, a city, or a region where resources reside. And then the last term we would like to define here will be the service activity. Now, a service activity is a scheduled event. Of a service so which means looking at what we have here services is just going to be a scheduled event of the service that the company actually provides so just like an exa example um, a patient goes into an hospital now the, of course at that point before the person of the, before the patient can get to know what is wrong with him or her a doctor will have to perform diagnosis that that is a service on its own and that and before the, the, the patient can, you know, be able to see a doctor, there must be a scheduled service activity for that, more like an appointment for that. Still under the service scheduling features, there, is, there are all the, you know, features that we we'll would like to talk about, which is more like, you know, talking about the scenarios that Microsoft Dynamics actually handle. There are different scenarios. A particular scenario is the individual worker scenario. Individual worker scenario is a situation where an individual worker needs to be scheduled to meet with client, customers, or other appointment. Then the second scenario is the shift work and skills scenario. Now, in this particular scenario, in a business where it's actually applicable to a business where workers need to be scheduled who have different sets working on different times shift. The third scenario we'll talk about will be the complex schedule scenario. Now, in this particular scenario, you, you have workers, I mean, workers need to be scheduled with different skill set, working with specialized equipment and located at different sites. And the last we'll talk about will be the hardbound service scenario. And in this particular scenario, you have workers where they need to be scheduled, who have different skill set, work with assigned equipment and work on location. The last 
thing or term that I would like to talk about would be the service scheduling process. What is service scheduling process? This is defining availability of resources. Basically just defining the service offering and defining resource scheduling constraint. So this still brings us to the aspect of like, you know, what we use this particular entity services for. And this, this, this entity actually deals with the service scheduling process. But, but before you start to make use of that, you have to adhere to the service scheduling process, which means we have or we must define the resources, the availability of the resources, and also we have to define the service that we want to offer. So we're going to create three facilities. Basically, we're just going to create three rooms. So to do that, we're going to go to settings and we go to business management. And then we go for facilities and equipment. So we're going to create facilities and equipment records. And after that, we're going to create resource group so that we can group them together. So first, we go to facilities and equipment. So here we can go for room one as an example. We can specify the site, but we're going to leave it blank. I can give the description. At this point, I click save. And another thing that we can quickly do here before moving from the moving away from this page will be to create a work uh, schedules, which is going to be the work hours from the common pane. So we click on that, and that's going to give us by default that this particular room that we've created is available all day. To actually specify or create weekly schedules we can do that by creating from setup and then we click new weekly schedule or we can as well go for work schedule for one day which means we just want to specify the work schedule for just a particular day we can as well do a time off which we're gonna do uh, in a bit Another thing you can do, as in another way, you can actually create a, uh, a weekly schedule is by coming to the calendar itself. You can specify that you can double click on a particular day, and that's going to open up this edit schedule uh, form. So at this point, I can say that well, I just want to change the schedule for this particular day, or from a, from the from this day onward, or for the entire uh, uh, calendars. So I'm going to go for this. I'm going to, I'm going to click OK. So at this point, uh, I, this is where I'm going to specify because by default it gives you 24 hours. So yeah, this is where I'm going to specify the actual hours that the room is going to be available for. So here I'm going to click on the link here to now say, well, the room is going to be available from 7 a.m. So another thing we can do is the, the capacity, show capacity. So for that, for this particular room, so the assumption is we're actually trying to create a particular room for a medical practitioner. So which means that at every point in time, we can only have one medical practitioner. So we're going to leave the capacity as one. And then we go ahead and click OK. So now we have the time to be from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. We can as well vary by day. Then the next one is we're gonna to come to the work days. We're gonna say, well, we don't, this particular room is not gonna be available on Sunday. Uh, it's gonna be available on Sunday, so we're gonna leave it this way. And we're gonna say that it's actually observed business closures. Business closures uh, is where you, you know, at the level of Microsoft Dynamics, there, there is a place where you can specify the, the period or the day that the organization or the company is going to be is going to observe uh, a closure so when you specify that and then you come here to say observe so which means when the company is closed the room is not going to be available once we're done with this we can save and close so another thing we would like to you know try here will be to create a time off so a time off might be maybe the room this particular room is not going to be available on a particular day due to maintenance so we can say and it's gonna be let's say it's gonna be on Tuesday for the whole day. So it's gonna be all day event. 
just one day and then we click OK. So we're done with this and we can click save and close. So we've created room one. We're quickly going to create a room two. So this time around, just try room. And then we are going to create conference room. Now for this conference room, let's try something by going to the uh, by setting up the weekly schedule, and we're going to set this work hours. And then if you go to the capacity, we're going to say, well, for this conference room, it can seat 15 people at a particular time. Right, and just save our close. So we're done with this. We're going to click Save. So talking about resource group, we can go ahead and create a resource group from here, or we can create it right from the settings business management page. We're going to try to do that from here. You see the hard to resource group, click on that. Because we do not have any resource group, so it's going to be blank. But we can create a new one from the fly. So we'll create a new one. So we can call this, uh, let's call it conference rooms. And then we click save and close. So it's already selected by default. And we click add. And the last part in this particular video will be the user being a resource and how to actually create work schedules for that. What we need to do would be to go to the users. So, of course, if you have the right privilege, and you click on users. Now, we have just two users here, sir, admin, and CRM trainer. We're going to mix up this CRM trainer as an example. So, let's assume this particular CRM trainer is going to be a resource that we're going to make use of. So when we open up this, what we're looking for is actually a related record. So to do that, I mean, to get to that, we go to right from the same trainer record. You will see the drop down here. You click on that and that will give us all the, I mean, access to the related records. Where we want to go will be the work hours for this particular same trainer. I am talking about the calendar for CRM Trainer. So by default, you see that the CRM Trainer user is available all day. So this needs to be set up if our service scheduling engine is going to work. So we can do the same thing we did when we are creating the work schedule for our resource uh, room one. So do the same thing. We create new. Um, And we can say that it only works weekdays. You can click save and close. That brings us to the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to make use of the service scheduling engine itself on how to schedule service, but first, by of course, creating this resource selection rule. Thank you very much for your time and please subscribe. Bye bye.